it's actually really simple you know we literally are walking this planet with this soul inside of this body and yet we are placing our trust in something outside of ourselves yeah no they, they're supporting us they're definitely guiding us they're definitely helping guide the way light the path but you are physically taking yourself on that path so when you start trusting in yourself, oh wow, you have so much more confidence in the process. This was the realization I had and I just thought, oh my goodness me, this whole time I've been like, I trust and fear. No, I haven't even said, I trust me. I trust myself. I trust myself to get me to where I need to be. I trust myself to do the things that I wanna do. I trust myself to be the best version of myself that I can be. I trust myself to heal. I trust myself to grow. I'd never said that and I just thought, oh my God, I need to trust myself. So the realization of trusting myself really helped me connect with myself even deeper. Hello, my loves, and welcome back to another episode. As you can see from the title, it's going to be a juicy one. I'm assuming that most people that click on this video or on this episode are mostly clicking because one, you've heard about Kundalini and you're intrigued by it, or two, you've actually had possible Kundalini awakening and you are wanting to have some relation to other people this <laughs> this story this experience this journey of mine hasn't been one that i planned i just need to make sure i put that out there my kundalini awakening story was not something that i had planned it it just happened this was a spontaneous random thing that happened to me and actually just shook me up in so many ways that I can't even explain that well I will be explaining I will be trying to explain in the best way possible please leave any comments down in the comment section below if you have been moving through this and what your most intense experience has been after your kundalini awakening and what you have learned from it the most when I first had my kundalini awakening I didn't really know for sure I had it in the back of my mind that it was possibly kundalini but I wasn't really sure whether it definitely was. And I just went down a deep, deep rabbit hole on YouTube specifically to find other people's experiences. So I was searching my Kundalini awakening, my first Kundalini awakening, my Kundalini awakening story. And I just needed to understand whether what I experienced was definitely Kundalini and whether the symptoms and signs and all the, those kind of things were aligning to something that I went through. And upon doing that, it was just, I was just certain. I was certain that it was, it, it was what happened to me. It was something that I didn't actually really know anything about prior to that. So this subject, the Kundalini, has been something that I've not been able to talk to a lot of people about because when I explain my story and what happened, I, and I'm saying this from experience because I also responded this way to a friend of mine when she told me about her Kundalini awakening story years ago and I didn't really understand what she was talking about. I kind of, I'm not even gonna lie when I say this, I kind of thought she was talking a little bit crazy. Um, and once it happened to me, it made me realize that actually, I feel really bad for even thinking that way. And when I experienced it, I understood everything that she meant from her story way back then. So this isn't something for the people that are very, um, what's the word? If you are a skeptic, um, or if you just think that some spiritual stuff is very delulu, then this this episode isn't going to be for you. If you have felt that you have had a Kundalini awakening just recently, or you are going through a Kundalini awakening, or you went and had a Kundalini activation, then this is definitely going to be for you. I wanted to share my experience because other people's experiences helped me through my process at the very beginning so much. And I just feel like I would be doing a disservice if I didn't share this. And I feel very comfortable and safe to be able to share this online. Isn't that funny? I feel comfortable and safe to share this online, but I don't necessarily feel comfortable and safe talking about this to certain people that I know because I know that one, they're just probably not ready to hear it. Two, they probably think I'm actually crazy because some of the stuff I'm gonna say is gonna sound crazy. I'm not even gonna deny it. I'm going to be putting my hands up and saying, yes, this is going to sound absolutely bizarre, okay? So, 
just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. That's all I'm going to say. And um, this is just coming from my own personal experiences and just rewinding back a little bit to the beginning of me saying that I didn't know what Kundalini was when this first all happened. I understood the term Kundalini was connected to the snake, the coil that spirals from your root all the way up to your crown. I knew that it was something that was very big in India and I knew that there was a practice called Kundalini Yoga. I've only ever done one Kundalini Yoga class and that was just me searching on YouTube, Kundalini, and I found this class that was about an hour long and I did it and I, I, I'm i gonna be completely honest, I didn't really get it. I kind of just did the class and I thought, well, that was random because it's very different. It's a lot of like breath work and movement, but this is actually me having a authentic Kundalini awakening that happened out of the blue, completely unexpected. And it just has catapulted me in other areas of my life that I couldn't have actually even imagined so far. And it ju it was just a whole nother level of awakening that happened to me based on like all my other things that have happened to me throughout the decade of me being on this journey. But this one was just really bizarre and just completely unexpected. And I know that you can go and get Kundalini awakening activations. It's a big thing. Um, I don't necessarily know how I feel about it. I don't have anything against the people that, that do the activations, but I just don't necessarily know how I feel towards it because of the activation happening to me authentically and naturally. It just, I know what can happen to you afterwards. I know the process that you move through after that. And if you aren't in a place where you are prepared for the change that will happen after that, then I just think that some people need to just take it easy. An activation should happen personally, I believe naturally. Whoever has done a Kundalini activation, fair enough. You know, you do you, just please be gentle on yourself and anything I say going forward, hopefully what I've experienced might also resonate with you and might help you through your process because it is really intense. I was quite lucky that I had done quite a lot of work on myself already up until this point. So I didn't really have many uncomfortable things come up for me, I would personally say, but I know from hearing people that I know who have had these natural Kundalini awakenings that, that have had really traumatic experiences after that, things that have like altered their vision in the moment or just lots of trauma coming up for them. And it happens so intensely that you kind of, you've got no choice but to face it. So just, yeah, go easy on yourself. And also just a side note, this episode is completely free flowing, okay? I just felt like if I'm telling you a story about something that's happened to me in my life, it needs to be free flowing. And I've got some points that I've noted down based on the things that have been more that have that have been something that have had an effect on me you know enough for me to be like this is what happened here and this is what happened there and I noticed this change I noticed that change so it's going to be free-flowing and just to begin I want to touch on the build up to this happening okay because I feel like it actually makes uh I feel I feel like it's been a big part of the lead up to me having this awakening. If you've been following me for a little while now, you would have seen that back in 2022, I moved to Glastonbury and then I was there for a year. So when this all happened, I was living in Glastonbury. I was living in my flat and my Kundalini awakening happened to me when I was in my flat. I also just wanna say, sorry, side note, I forgot to mention that this is gonna be a whole series. I'm gonna be creating a whole Kundalini series based on my experiences personally for other people to hopefully help you through yours because I know the benefits it it has from other people talking about their experiences and then when you're going through the same thing and you kind of feel so alone when you go through this because it's such a rare thing that happens. I personally think that it's so nice to be able to speak to people or at least find people that resonate with what you have been through. So this is gonna be a whole series. This is the first of many videos and episodes about Kundalini, okay? Um, so just, just stay tuned for that. I just felt like it's a really good place to kind of 
talk about this and share my experiences because it's happened so recently and I, I've got loads of notes in front of me here from what I wrote down about my Kundalini awakening story. And it, I wrote this a year after it happened. So it's been over a year now. Yeah, I just, I had to write some stuff down because I thought, oh, I don't want to forget this because so many things happen and so many things change that I just want to make sure that I've got everything that I can remember down so I can come back to it at some point because sometimes we just forget things along the way. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, going back to living in Glastonbury and the build up to me having a Kundalini awakening. So when I first moved to Glastonbury and I don't condone what I'm about to say here, okay? So don't take my experience and think, oh, if I if you want to push your Kundalini awakening, just don't just don't do this. Like I'm not saying what I was doing here was right, okay, and healthy or anything like that. Just please just act accordingly to you and your experience. Your experience is unique to every single person on this planet. We can have resonance with someone else's experience, but your life, your journey is unique to everyone else's, okay? So I personally don't think you should push a Kundalini awakening. I, Like I said before, something that should just happen naturally. So what I'm about to say, when mine activated, I'm not saying go out and do that because just don't (laughs) just this is just what happened to me um so the year of me living in Glastonbury when I was living there I now I've smoked cannabis in my life before but when I moved to Glastonbury and I had a bit of a weird relationship with cannabis when I first moved there because prior to me moving there I hadn't really touched it for a really long time because I didn't have a very nice experience for quite a few years before that and it just put me off And then when I was living there, I'm not going to go into the details, but I basically built a relationship with it in a completely different way. I had this experience, but it was like an enlightening experience with me opening up to the idea of trying it again. And I just had a couple of puffs of my friends join. I also had a gummy and I had the most beautiful experience. And so from that point on, I started smoking it quite a lot but I was smoking it for more spiritual purposes I was just building a relationship with it and I was finding that I was getting so many realizations about life living in Glastonbury anyway is crazy in itself as you have so many activations when you live on that land because it's just on ley lines and it's the heart chakra of the world and you know what I mean if you go to Glastonbury you'll know what I'm saying but living there is just a whole different ball game and yeah I was just having so many realizations and activations and um awakenings when I was when I was living there and I was working with this plant and I remember in September 2022 it was the autumn equinox and I had a bufo ceremony planned and it was a solo ceremony I went and done this bufo it was absolutely amazing so much stuff released from me lots of emotion lots of deep rooted emotion released from my body and I remember the lady saying to me you will find that your life and your energy is going to start aligning more now you'll start realigning inside energetically and you'll notice it. So just go easy on yourself. Okay, cool. So I walked away, had some real deep process after that. And January came around and I decided to create a space for myself. I remember it was a Friday evening after work. I set up this cute little space in my my flat and I was doing a little ceremony for myself because I was going to do Reiki on myself. So I set the ceremony space up and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a joint and I'm going to Reiki the joint. I'm going to have these intentions as I'm making it and I'm going to set set this intention and even when I'm smoking it, I'm going to smoke it with intention and think about what it is that I want to um, basically let go of. And there was, a, there, were, there was things that I was noticing about myself at this point in time that I had a lot of cords old cords attached to me that were not serving me any good they were actually holding me back in life and I remember doing this meditation and seeing all the cords in my back and it was as if the cords were pulling me away from my future and they were keeping me locked locked in locked in back there so when I was doing this ceremony it was to cut the cords and basically let go of all the those attachments those cords that weren't serving me to let them all go 
so I could have space myself and I could start moving forward. So I go and smoke this joint, these intentions are in my mind, I come back to my mat and I sit down and before you start doing the Reiki on yourself, you call in the energy. So I'm sat there and I'm just sat cross-legged, sat upright and I start calling upon the Reiki energy. Before I even start drawing the symbols, I call in the Reiki energy and I suddenly started to feel this energy in the root of my spine and it felt instantly like this spiral of energy just coiling up, up my root and up into my womb and it was moving so slowly and it was really interesting because when this was, when this started happening, I was kind of like, it was as if my, my ego and my higher self was separated and it was as if like my higher self was here present feeling the energy and then my ego was behind me and my ego was trying to <laughs> talk its way into like what is going on what's happening why are you feeling that this is really strange like just all that that noise that chatter in your mind it was just there it was just chattering away trying to put me off of the the present moment of like what I was feeling it was just like trying to logically figure out what was happening and um but my higher self in the moment was sat there in that peaceful state, feeling this energy and recognizing that it was moving and it was started to move up, started to move up my spine. It started going up into my crown and it was just coiling itself all the way from my root, all the way up to my, my crown chakra. And I kept hearing, let go, let go. And it sounded like that, let go, let go as if, spirit or my higher self was encouraging me to let go let go and although my intention going at that point was to let go of the cords what I realized in this moment is that I needed to let go myself I needed to let go and because I was fighting this urge to to surrender to this feeling that I was feeling in my body this spiraling this energetic spiral that was going from my root all the way up to my crown chakra I was I was kind of resisting it because this this ego behind me this chatter was going like what the, what the fuck like what's going on like why this is so weird why are you feeling this this is such a weird feeling that this feels really cool but what, what like I don't really understand what's happening but I could just feel so much energy in my body surging literally through me and as soon as I started hearing the words let go let go I was like okay I just kind of like surrendered to it and as this was all happening this let go and this feeling I could feel my body was moving and it was moving in the direction of the energy so as it was spiraling round and up my body was spiraling round and up specifically my head was moving like this if you're watching if you're watching on YouTube my head was going round in circles but my body was still I could feel the energy coursing through me you know, as I started to surrender more to it, letting go more to it, my whole body started to move with the energy and it was coiling and spiraling and going up. And I could feel the energy literally bursting out of my crown chakra. And the only way I could explain this feeling was literally like making love to life. Like it was so orgasmic. I I can't even, I was literally verbally orgasming as this was happening, like verbally, like making orgasm sounds because that's what it felt like. It literally felt like I was making love to life. I've never felt anything in my life like it. You know, it's it wasn't the same as a as an orgasm that you have when you're having sex. It was it was a completely different feeling. This was so energetic. And the fact that, you know, nothing intimate was happening. I wasn't doing anything intimate to myself. I just this this energy was just so fucking amazing <laughs> like the fucking feeling was so amazing it was so beautiful it was so amazing the feeling I, I like it it was just incredible and that was just going through me and I was just allowing myself to flow with it but even still whilst this was all happening that ego was still sat there behind me going like what the fuck are you doing like why are you doing this look at yourself like you must look so you look so weird like look at look at what you're doing because no one no one was there with me but like I still like because my body was moving and there was so much happening it was such a weird feeling because I felt honestly completely out of control of my body I felt like I wasn't even in 
control of myself that 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 was there was even though I was resisting what was happening I couldn't necessarily resist that because I think my whole body if I was if I was going to resist that I think my whole body would have just start started vibrating like energetically vibrating um and it just kept happening and kept going and it was just I it was I was in this bliss state of orgas orgasmic life force energy flowing through me for I don't even know how long but it just it was just going on and on and on and on and on and I was just in this spiral and it was like I was connected to earth but I was also connected to the sky and it, just my whole every single chakra in my body was just completely like cleared out like completely cleansed like everything had just gone out of my crown and it was the most fucking incredible experience like the most incredible feeling and when that happened once that once that continued to go and flow the voice let go let go stopped because I realized as this was all happening that I needed to let go. I needed to like fully surrender to life, fully let go myself first before I could let go of anything else. I needed to just completely let go. Like it was as if I was shown what it feels like to fully let go. And I remember once the energy started like kind of coming down and I, I was breathing, I was really deeply breathing and I, I just had to take a moment to like really sit with myself and just be with that energy because I was kind of very confused to be honest I was quite just not really sure what happened I was I was really confused because again I haven't even called the symbols in yet I just called in the energy and then um I decided to do Reiki on myself after that and I've never felt Reiki like this in my life I could feel every single bit of energy that was coming out of my hands and every like even down to me moving my hands in circular motions side by side on my face I could feel it was as if I had two giant like let's just say for example I had two giant balls in my hand and someone had these massage balls and they were massaging your back in circular motions that's what it felt like with my energy I felt like my energy was being massaged and cleansed and cleared and Oh, it's just the most beautiful personal Reiki session I've ever done on myself. The whole ceremony was just absolutely amazing. And that is that is literally the first, that was the first of many different Kundalini awakenings that I'd had. That was the first. And that happened over and over and over again. And it always happened spontaneously. And I can't remember how many times specifically, but I know it was over five times that I'd had kundalini awakening just like randomly happen and it seemed to be that it would happen a lot every time I smoked cannabis and it was so strange because after this happened anytime I smoked cannabis after this my sensitivity levels were so fucking high that I couldn't smoke the level that I could before I couldn't have like I, I would have like one or two puffs and I was way too high to even like have any more whereas before I could smoke like a mini joint and then it was like and everybody everyone here that knows what it's like to to smoke cannabis usually your tolerance like builds right over time mine had built over time but it was as if this energy knocked me right back to like day one of ever trying it and it was really bizarre so yeah after that I was really sensitive to to that medicine and it made me realize that I needed to stop um smoking it because it was just it was making me feel way too much and I was so sensitive and it kept giving me these random spontaneous activations that I would start feeling this energy coursing through me and um f and just suddenly start having this uh, this awakening and I I didn't ever want it to happen when I was around people because it's just the way your body moves it's not necessarily um it doesn't look normal you know it doesn't like unless you're in a place like Glastonbury people wouldn't probably care if they saw you um convulsing in a way that was just like really unusual that would kind of seem normal there but it just I remember I was be I was up at tour one time and I was, I remember I'd just come on my period and I was in so much pain and a couple of my friends were inside tour drumming and nobody else was there, it was just us lot. They went inside the tour drumming and I sat outside and I was just observing the sky because the sky looked beautiful and I was just really, really there with my womb and I felt very, very 
anchored into the earth because my womb just felt so heavy. And I started feeling this kundalini energy circulating in my 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 root chakra again and then moving up my body again and I was having to resist it because all my all my friends that were in the tour drumming the drumming was just bringing it up and out of me as well and I could see myself I could visually see myself in the middle of tour dancing in a spiral and I just I just I had to like really like breathe and hold it in and that was when I was like really trying to resist it it's, pr- it's probably not a good thing to resist it because what happened after that was this was just one other time that I had a, an activation where I could really really was resisting it I told the guys I was like look I need to go and I remember like walking down from tour getting in my car driving back to my flat I got into my flat and as soon as I walked through that front door the heat that just overtook me I suddenly just felt completely boiling hot I felt like I needed to just take all my clothes off because I was like about to faint um I was just getting my heat my body temperature just like skyrocketed and I remember just sitting down on my bed and I was I, I didn't even have the I thought I thought to myself at this point if I don't get my clothes off I'm gonna vomit all over myself I'm gonna vomit all over my my bedroom all over my bed I felt felt really dizzy and very very lightheaded and just really really like discombobulated and um I I had to just lie down for a minute and then anytime I felt like I was like okay right I I can probably just get this jacket off now so I, I I was like taking a piece of clothing off like really really slowly little bit by bit because I just couldn't I couldn't sit up for long enough without feeling like I was either going to vomit or pass out or whatever. But just this energy that was like coursing through me was just so overwhelming. Eventually, I managed to... <laughs> I know this is like really provocative, and I, and I did, but this is just what happened. Um, eventually, I managed to um, just lie on my bed naked. I was in the position of a fetal. A fetal? I was in a fetus position. I got into a fetus position on my bed and I was just laying there and I felt like I was in this womb and like the energy that was just rushing through my body was so overwhelming. It made me feel really, really hot, really faint, really dizzy. My head was just like, felt like it was going to explode. Um, and I managed to like get myself up and go to the toilet, get myself a, some water and then just lay there and I remember once this happened the once I'd once the feeling of dizziness and f- the faint feeling like kind of died down I managed to just okay stretch my body out so I wasn't in the fetal position anymore I was I was stretched out I remember just lying straight I was lying on my back and again this energy started flowing through me again but this time it wasn't the spiral it was more of a wave so it came from my root chakra again and it was like waving all the way up my spine and up to my crown and out of my crown and this wave of energy was again started feeling like I was making love to life again it was just like it just started happening but I think the reason why it was so I was so overwhelmed and felt really sick is because I that energy needed to come out of me when I was up at tour but I couldn't I couldn't I had to like keep it down because I just I knew I just needed to get home I just needed to get home this can happen to me at home I'm in a safe space no one's around me I'm on my own that's the best place for me for this to happen and yeah like I managed to get home and obviously that all happened so it was (laughs) it was just really like what is happening to me um it happened again uh at another time about I remember the first time it happened again actually that that was that was a bit further down the line but the the first time it happened to me was at the end of Jan and then and then the beginning of February we were up north to go and surprise my auntie for her 50th party and we were staying in the Premier Inn and I had my own room and where my auntie lives there's a lot of like industrial buildings and just massive shops I'm going to start talking about all the different symptoms that I got from Kundalini Awakening but some of them I'm going to mention in in these mini short stories of Kundalini Awakenings that happened to me and I will go revert back to like after it happened to me the first time the things that happened after that like the things that I started noticing about myself and the changes and all of that kind of stuff but I'm just telling you like the different Kundalini Awakenings that I had after this happened because I can't really remember the order that they all happened apart from these two after that it it just kept happening it just kept happening and it was just like I couldn't control it but this time I was just sat on the bed 
And I felt like I could feel every single person that had been in that room. I felt like my sensitivity levels to noise was just so much more heightened. I could hear every single piece of electrical items in that room. And it just felt so noisy. I was just sitting there and I was just like, oh my God, this is so loud. And it's so loud. I could, all I could hear was this really, really loud buzz coming from the TV, coming from the lights, coming from the switches. Oh, it was just, it was so much. And the same type of kundalini awakening happened like the first time so it was the, started with the spiral from the root all the way up to my crown and I just had to ride it out basically making that love to life and you know I say it was very it is like making love to life and it's very orgasmic that feeling that you get when you have a kundalini awakening can feel very addictive I can't lie to you because it's such a powerful experience that I feel that people end up chasing that feeling and people end up getting into places where you can like feel that you just want to feel that 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 orgasmic like explosion that happens in your body and out of your crown and I don't think that's necessarily benefiting us it's a nice experience to have don't get me wrong but I don't think it's benefiting us long term. I feel like you're just chasing another high. But I think the best thing for you to do is is basically integrate that that explosion of energy, but across like spread it across your whole life now going forward, rather than like just having these big bursts of awakenings like every now and then. Just why not like allow that energy to flow through your body throughout the day, throughout the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day that you can kind of just have that energy in you but it's so much more like leveled out um I hope this isn't all over the place it kind of feels like it is already but it is what it is so yeah that was another one that happened and I remember thinking to myself right the first time it ever happened to me I, I remember going to bed that night and I slept really well and then I got up the next day and I had so much energy I had so much energy and I felt so like powerful and really just oh my God, I feel amazing. I feel like I've got so much energy. I can do so much stuff. I've got so much power in me. I just feel really like in my power. I feel really in my power. Quite honestly, I feel like I feel like the next day, I just felt like unstoppable. I just felt really unstoppable and I felt really amazing. And obviously it was just an incredible feeling that I had in my body, but I think it was just the lingering energies of this, this awakening that had happened. And I remember thinking the next day, I just don't even know how I could look at life the same again. It just felt like it altered my brain chemistry. It felt like it, it altered my nervous system. And a, the, <laughs> the best way I could explain it is that it felt like it had realigned all my chakras, my energetic chakras and the energetic cord that runs through the middle of the body. But my physical body needed to catch up to that so although I had been like realigned da, 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 I've been readjusted to this straight okay energy is like pff, we're 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 in alignment my body had to catch up to that it affected my body after that because of like the amount of energy that ran through me and this this realignment and this readjustment and the nervous system shake up just shaking me back into better shape basically better energetic shape everything just felt really different everything felt different everything and I remember thinking about my my close friends and thinking oh my gosh they're never going to understand me they're not going to understand me now they're never going to get this like, how am I meant to explain this to people without this sounding completely crazy how um how am like first of all what the fuck was that <laughs> that what the fuck and I remember reaching out to my Reiki teacher because she has had a kundalini awakening and I just remember thinking about her and thinking I need to talk to her about this because she, she will help me understand this a little bit better thankfully I was so lucky that I had someone in my life that had actually been actually I've got a couple of people in my life that this has actually happened to so I was very very lucky but I understand that for some people, when they have their kundalini awakenings, it can be a very lonely place. So I was very lucky to have some people in my life that I could reach out to and just maybe just try and get a bit of understanding about what happened. But deep down in my body, I knew it was a kundalini awakening, even though I didn't know what 
kundalini awakening really entailed or what what it really was i didn't get it i didn't understand it because personally i feel like the word kundalini gets thrown around in the spiritual community in a way that people don't necessarily understand what it is it's kind of like this um new age um stamp that people can put on their experiences and their journeys to be like oh yeah i've had a kundalini awakening um but like when you when it actually happens and it's not something that you even knew about or it's not something that you understood it's very fucking confusing it's very fucking confusing you think like you're going crazy at one point i did i felt like i was going crazy at one point um and i will get into these i'm i'm slowly getting into like the different feelings of you know what i experienced and what i felt during the aftermath of it because there, there's some good points that I'm going to mention, good things that that happened, and there's also some things that happened that wasn't comfortable after having this awakening, because it literally alters your brain chemistry. Personally, that's what I felt, especially with the amount of energy that like burst through your brain and through your crown chakra. There's definitely something that's happening there to your nervous system, to your body, your energetic body. I remember just waking up the next day and just thinking life is not going to be the same again. This is a new, this is like, this has woke me up in a way that I can't explain. And I know that I'm not going to be able to explain this to everyone because not everyone's going to understand it. There's going to be people that are going to look at me and think, you are fucking crazy. You are delulu, you're delusional, what the fuck. And then there's people that are going to look at me and be like, I fucking get it. I've been there. I understand or that is exactly what I've just gone through. And that, And that's why I'm doing this because I really want to support the people through it in a way that I needed and, and that also helped support me. Um, so there was this kind of like feeling afterwards of I'm gonna be misunderstood. People are gonna misunderstand me. Knowing that I can't tell everyone about this, I can't talk much about this to certain people because it will be I'll be looked at a certain way or people won't understand. There's this big feeling of like being misunderstood that was very, very present for me. This like fear of being misunderstood, but knowing that that's what it's going to be. And but accepting the fact that, you know, yeah, you might be misunderstood, but it's OK. You just know and you know to be selective about who you're sharing your experiences with. And um, the last time I actually felt like I had this Kundalini energy running through me was actually not that long ago. I would say it was probably like two months ago maybe something like that maybe two and a half months ago and I just felt that this immense amount of energy running through my body and it felt like my body was vibrating and twitching massively and I couldn't really control it and I was trying to like breathe through it even though this was happening to me I felt like I couldn't say what was happening because the it wasn't being received by the other person and there's moments like that where you feel like you have to get a lock on the energy that's running through you and that is so uncomfortable because when that's happening your body is just I can't explain it but it's so it's so hard on the body your body's like basically wanting to shake this energy up and out but when you're trying to restrain that it's like holding a beach ball under the water you know like you're if you, you're trying to hold a beach ball under the water as soon as you let that go it's like it blows straight up that's what it feels like when you're trying to keep a hold of this energy and you're not letting it actually like flow through you it's a really interesting journey having this happen so the different things that I felt afterwards obviously I've felt different felt like I was going to be misunderstood and I felt like I couldn't be sharing this with many people and it's not gonna be received by people and it will be received by some but not by others I had this deep need and this deep desire to understand what the fuck happened to me. <laughs> I really needed to know what happened. And I just honestly went so rampage on YouTube trying to watch every single Kundalini story video that I could find to understand what was happening to me or what had happened to me. And it just wasn't leaving my energy or my head. Like I just, I couldn't shake it off because it was just such a big thing that just so randomly happened that I just needed to understand to have this feeling of oh I can breathe because I know what it was I understand what that was now so I can breathe I can breathe okay I can breathe happy and also so that I could have a better explanation of like okay this is what happened to me and this is you know 
maybe what's going to happen to me going forward i can kind of like have a bit more of awareness around what the what kundalini really meant and where it really came from i had this heightened awareness about myself and about the people and the things and everything around me my awareness to things was just spiked up in a level that i can't even explain this awareness was so it was so potent and it ha- it still is there I'm, I'm saying it as if like it's not still there but the awareness that this gave me was was wild it was crazy actually because there was times where i was so aware of myself that i literally could see a wounding a trigger like i could see how to fix it within like fucking seconds it was really really bizarre i remember this one time <laughs> at Ben Kemp um this this one time I came back from tour this is a different time I came back from tour because remember I was living in Glastonbury at the time and um I remember getting into bed and I was laying there and I was trying to sleep and I just couldn't sleep because I was having like flashes of images and I mean like flashes of images of my life my whole previous days that had led to the point where I'm at now. It was as if I had, you know, those photo things where you press the button and it switches the photo and then it switches the photo. It felt like that was happening, but it was like, like that was just like image, 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 image. And it was just flashing, flashing, flashing. And as this was all happening, I was realizing and I was seeing, and this was all happening whilst my eyes were shut, bearing in mind, in bed. I was just like laying there and I was just receiving this download of like, this is why you do this and this is why you've done that and this is why you react this way and this is why you do this this way and it was like I was seeing all the things that needed to be healed and all the ways that I could heal it and and the reasons why I've been responding that way or acting that way or being that way I literally could see everything happening in front of me and it was as if like I was like seeing it and then healing it and then seeing it and then healing it and then seeing it and then healing it and I couldn't sleep because my brain was just like, (laughs) just, just, I can't, it's so hard to put into words all of this because there's just so many things that happened after this, like so soon in like, I would say all of this intensity was very much present for about six to nine months. I would say six months actually, because um, things started to kind of die out a little bit because after this all happened and the intensity and all the realizations and then I moved back home, I moved out of Glastonbury, things kind of settled a little bit and I had to like integrate everything. Uh, but yeah, these these mad realizations I kept having about life and about myself, and it wasn't it wasn't just something that I would have to sit with for a while and understand why that trigger. It was literally showing me why I was being triggered, where it came from, and then how I could heal it, like that. It was just showing me and showing me and showing me and showing me, and I'd never seen anything like that before in my life. It was as if I was on plant medicine and I was like healing through plant medicine, even though I was not on plant medicine. <laughs> the difference in my awareness was just my my awareness just maximized to a whole nother level i remember the first few days after my awakening happened my first one i felt very confident in myself but there's one thing about this that i feel like every single person i've spoken to personally about kundalini awakenings that have, people that have had one all say what i'm about to say right and it's it's weird i can't explain it but people stare at me differently now. I noticed when I when it first happened to me, people were staring at me, but it was like weird. Like it wasn't just like a man was staring at me and then a man was staring at me over there and a man was staring at me over there. Usually it's men that stare. It was like fucking everyone was staring. Women, men, kids, just everyone. I remember being in Tesco's and I was walking around trying to get food and I felt like everyone was looking at me and it was the most weirdest thing because... I didn't I'm not used to that like that's not something that I feel I have you know some people women or men might get stared at a lot more than others because they're very beautiful and and when I'm saying as I'm saying this I'm realizing it is is a lot of it is energetic as well I think because your energy has been shaken up in such a way it changes your energy field and it's your energy that people are drawn to I don't necessarily think it's to do with looks or anything like that I genuinely think it's down to energy that this happens to so when your kundalini activates it changes your energy and people are drawn to energy and I I was explaining it to my reiki teacher and I was like it literally feels like moths to a flame and I said but even when you're not doing anything and even if you I feel like I look like shit it still happens 
And every person I've spoken to that has had a Kundalini awakening has said the same thing. After they have had theirs awakened, they notice people stare more. It's not staring in a way that's, you know, sexual or anything like that. It's more so curious, curiosity. Some people harness a different type of energy and they walk with a different type of energy. People turn. It's interesting. It's one of the things that I don't necessarily like to say because it sounds really egotistical. It's not like that. It's more so just people stare more now than they ever did and that never used to happen to me before so it's just really interesting to have observed that in a way and not noticed that before so that was a really weird one that I felt happened afterwards and definitely had the confirmation from other people that have been on that journey and had that experience and said the same things my sensitivity levels peaked oh my gosh literally out of this world my sensitivity levels weren't just for like you know how I felt sensitively towards things like emotionally no 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 this was like sensitivity levels to like things that i was eating things i was watching being around certain groups of people or being in different locations or walking into a room that i've never been in before and feeling the energy of that room my sensitivity levels across the board of my whole life and every single experience throughout life going forward the sensitivity levels to cannabis was so intense to the point where I just I couldn't smoke it anymore because it was just doing way too much it got uncomfortable after that and I also think that if you get to a point where you're having like a really spiritual experience with the medicine of cannabis and then you go into a state where it eventually becomes more so uncomfortable that is when you need to stop working with her personally because that's not really I personally don't feel like it's necessarily serving you. It's causing you more anxiety than it is causing you, you know, peace. Um, but yeah, so the sensitivity levels, they're like massively peaked, which was just like crazy. Okay, this is an interesting one. So there was extreme spells of presence and bliss states. So very early into this all happening, I remember on a Friday evening, <laughs> I remember going up to tour and I just really, really wanted to just be up high, just breathing some fresh air. I'd been working all day and I just wanted to sit and chill. I didn't actually like, I didn't reach out to anyone that day and be like, are you coming up to tour? Are you coming to hang? Whatever. I didn't go up there with my drum because I was just like, I don't want to, I just don't really feel like that. I just wanted to go up there and just sit and chill and just have a few moments of grounding and to just be with myself after a long week so I remember going up there and no one was up there it was a beautiful starry night and I just remember being in tour I sat in tour for a little bit and I just suddenly felt this really uncomfortable feeling in my stomach as if there was something not nice up there <laughs> that was the only way I can explain it it was just felt like something wasn't right and there was either going to be something coming in or there was spirit I don't know but it just didn't feel very nice and um, I noticed my heart started to race really, really intensely. And I could feel like the beat of my heart was so strong. I feel like I could literally hear my heartbeat inside of me. So I remember walking outside to the side of tour. I was just breathing really, really deeply. I was taking deep breaths in. I was taking deep breaths out. And I noticed that I couldn't hear any, like I couldn't hear anything inside my head, if that makes sense. So like this extreme spell of presence although I was feeling like my heart was racing I could hear my heartbeat it took a moment and I just listened and it was so quiet and I could hear every single sound around me and I realized that the uncomfortable feeling that I felt that got my heart racing was actually the fact that I didn't know what it was like to not have thoughts in my head, even though I have meditated, you know, I've meditated and I've sat in stillness for long periods of time. But this was like, it was as if someone removed my thoughts out of my head, like completely they were gone. Because usually when you're going about your day, you might have random little thoughts that pop into your head. But even this process, me going outside and me sitting down and just being still for a moment, I just felt like all my thoughts were just, they were just gone everything was gone and I was like oh my gosh what am I without my thoughts who am I without my thoughts and then I realized I thought oh my gosh I just need to enjoy this this is actually very very fucking peaceful and I just sat there and I was like oh, wow I'm just gonna enjoy this and I just started taking deep breaths and I thought let me just tune into the sounds around me and I could hear birds I could hear the cars down on the road I could just hear the wind blowing everything felt so peaceful and although I felt that anxiety peak 
that just dropped, that disappeared, that just dissolved as soon as I realized that this is what it's like to feel utter peace, utter presence. And that's what I call a bliss state. And actually watching other people's experiences on their Kundalini stories, I've heard a couple of people say that they've had experiences where they've experienced bliss states where it's just literally like pure presence and there's no thoughts or anything. They're just there in that moment. And this continued to happen after this. It didn't happen straight away, but that was like the first time I really recognized it. And then after that, it just happened. It kept happening every now and then. And it actually ended up becoming my practice of being present all the time. And it's funny because I find that when you go on the spiritual journey, you go through phases where you are very much deep in the healing process of like learning about your triggers and healing your wounds and healing your past and all of that. And then you go to a point where you're in this moment of just like, I just wanna be present. I just wanna be present in the moment. I just wanna enjoy life. I feel like that's when you really integrate everything that you learn, you really take everything in and you really anchor it into the body and you really embody everything that you have learned and unlearned and healed about yourself. So presence really came back to my awareness and really became a big part of my journey after that because even though all these spiritual practices were serving me in ways, presence became my first and only practice after that for a really long period of time because I just felt like that was the only thing that was serving me the most to be the best version of myself and to enjoy life in a way that again just felt very present and joyful and playful I'm saying these all in a different order. They're all a bit jumbled because I just was remembering all these different notes that happened to me over the time of me going through all of this. I'm going through the list of the things that happened, but I can't give you a timeline of when this was all happening. To have an idea in mind, it was all happening within a six month span of time. So I feel like going back to me mentioning about how the energy shakes up your nervous system, realigns you, and then your body has to catch up. Well, I had really 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 bad backache after this happened I can't remember how soon in but it was pretty soon into this all happening the backache I got I got this immense pain in my lower was it my lower right hip I'm pretty sure it was my lower right hip my back my lower back towards my right hip that was the honestly like it was so bad and I hadn't done any like strenuous exercise or crazy walks or anything like that or lifted anything really heavy for this to have happened I could feel it was like energetic and I needed to shift that through my body but through dance I remember I was getting up every morning and I was doing yoga but it just wasn't actually helping it wasn't doing anything to help my backache it just remained the same and I just remember having this realization again of you need to dance this out of your body you need to dance this out I just remember I spent a good chunk of time in my flat, just put on some music and I'd actually done some tribal fusion dancing and a lot of circular hip movements because tribal fusion anyway is very good for the hips and especially women because of the movement that you are doing within the womb hip area. It's really, really amazing to somatically move and shift energy out of that space that isn't serving you. So I just remember having this intention going into it. Let me move my body that way, especially with like a Kundalini awakening, you know, tribal fusion is very much like you're moving your body, like the movement of a snake, which is really cool. Especially with the hips and the arms and everything, the way your body just flows. It's so tantric really, and beautiful and feminine. And I think moving your body when you've got bad backache like I had it was very much in my hips and that's where we store a lot of our like stuff you know as women it's just this empty pocket this womb is just this empty pocket of like emotion that we just store in there and we just keep packing things in there and it's so good to like shift the energy out so I had this backache for weeks I just remember having this one long period of time where I just danced and I moved my hips and I just let myself flow and I can honestly say I woke up the next day and I had no backache no backache and that was the first time I'd ever experienced healing through dance and I've heard again just through the grapevine of everyone who has shared their stories online about their kundalini awakening stories that some people actually get really bad aches and pains in their bodies afterwards and these are the the reasons why I don't think you should go ahead and just try and force a kundalini awakening or anything because you just never know 
unless you're really ready to prep your body for this like you just never know what might happen i got chronic fatigue after this happened as well i had lack of concentration really felt so fucking tired for like the longest period of time i think again it was just something to do with my energy being shaken up and readjusted and realigned but I also feel like the level of realizations that had happened to me and the level of energy that had surged through my body, I just think my body was trying to catch up and it was just so tired all the fucking time. I felt like all I needed to do, all I wanted to do was sleep and I'd sleep for the longest time. And to, honestly, since that's happened, my need for sleep is just on another level. I've always been a very sleepy, tired person. And I am one of those girls that I do sleep for about 10 hours. I do. I know that they say eight hours is a great time. I actually need like nine to 10 hours to feel satisfied with my sleep, my rest. And if I don't get that, then I can really feel the effects it has on me. And it's not nice. So this chronic fatigue kicked in huge after this all happened more so than anything and I think that with the chronic fatigue the lack of concentration came into that as well because I just couldn't be although I was experiencing moments of bliss and presence I couldn't concentrate on the tasks that I had to do my matrix job for example at this point I was working full-time as well but I just felt like I couldn't concentrate on what I was doing it made me realize how much my job was so misaligned to me because I'm just like this is so boring realizing that this job is just so not what I want to do for the rest of my life it's so not serving me in a way that I feel excited yeah I very much felt like the lack of concentration was more so around the things that I knew wasn't serving me in my life wasn't lighting me up wasn't exciting me in life I was just like what is this this is so boring and then I just find myself just staring out of the window whilst I'm meant to be working during the movement through this process I noticed that I started isolating myself a lot more than I used to and this was because my sensitivity levels to other people's energy just maximized to a whole nother level and I just felt like whatever that person is moving through, whatever that person is feeling, if they've got an actual physical pain in their body or if they're just energetically not feeling great, I could literally feel all of it. I could feel them on a whole nother level. That was uncomfortable for me because it was so hard to separate my energy from theirs because what I'm feeling is already a lot. I'm already feeling a lot in life. I'm very deep feeling person that when I've got someone in front of me that's moving through a lot as well I'm really really feeling them too and to have that intensity it can just feel overwhelming sometimes and that's why I do spend a fair bit of time by myself I actually like to spend time by myself because I need that I need to spend time with myself so that I can recharge my energy so I can align myself so I can be clean of anyone else's energy so that I can be in my own energy because I can't explain the level of feeling that I feel when I feel other people it can feel very uncomfortable at times and sometimes it doesn't that's why it's important that you want to spend your time with the right people I literally found that I had the ability to feel the pain that other people were feeling inside their body within mine so if someone was feeling something in their gut, I would feel it in my gut. If someone was feeling pain in their shoulder, I'd feel the pain in my shoulder. If someone was experiencing a headache, I'd experience a headache. It was like I was them and they were me, even though we were two separate beings. It could have been anybody, but I could feel it all happening. And I had this ability to see the truth in people, but the real truth not just the person that's literally stood in front of me talking to me I could see beyond the physical body and I could see the energetics I call it seeing beyond the veil because I really feel like I can see beyond the veil that's again another reason why I don't spend too much time with loads of people because it can get very exhausting and also it can be really uncomfortable if you're recognizing that you can see the real truth in people when it's not something you necessarily want to see and it's not a comfortable truth and sometimes you know people can say it's a superpower but sometimes it feels like it's not because it is uncomfortable seeing the real truth in people and sometimes it's really beautiful do you know what I mean most of the time it's beautiful but it's just you can feel the pain of others I could feel the pain of others and sometimes the truth is the pain and even though someone's there and they're 
they've got a smile on their face and they're speaking highly of life but you can feel the pain inside them it's it that can feel very uncomfortable because it makes you feel this sadness this deep sadness you know so yeah I spent a lot of time isolating myself a little bit after that because I just didn't know how to get a control over me separating myself from other people's energy I know different ways to do that now and I knew how to protect my energy anyway but this was just like a whole nother level of like I need to really wrap myself in a protection ball of light I actually learned something from my shamanic teacher in the last year kappa training that I did and that was to put myself in a crystal and have that protect me throughout my days and which is something I need to do more of actually because it just helps me get through the day because I find that if anybody resonates with this if you feel like you can really feel the other person or other people around you really really I mean really feel them really feel what they're moving through really feel what they're going through really feel their emotions really feel their pain it can get really exhausting to not just feel your own but feel the others around you we already sometimes can feel exhausted from our own feelings and our own emotions and our own things through life but when you're feeling yours and others it's just even more exhausting so yeah definitely find ways to practice protection on yourself and just make sure that you're not letting the wrong people get into your energy field and just keeping it clean and also supporting others through their pain as well bless them this was a really random one that happened to me I noticed after my kundalini awakening I had moments of altered vision and this was really fucking weird actually this really tripped me out quite a bit and I kept having this thing where I'd walk down from tour and it'd feel like my feet were on the wrong foot if that makes sense so like my feet were on the wrong legs it felt like my left foot was on my right leg and my right foot was on my left leg and it felt like I was walking like cross-legged and that was really really weird and it kept happening every time I'd walk down from tour and I'd have to really take a moment to breathe and just really really like pay attention because a lot of the time I'd be walking down a little bit later into the evening because me and my friends would have been up there drumming and just chilling and stuff and it would get dark by the time I'm walking back and it just I kept getting this feeling of my feet being on the wrong foot I'd have to be like right your feet are on the right foot <laughs> stop tripping out it's okay your brain is just being weird right now just breathe you're okay really take it slowly and walk down And I know that the altered vision can affect people in ways that's even worse than that. And I'm really glad that mine was literally just the feet thing because if it was anything other than that, I would have been (laughs) worried because I know some people that have had Kundalini awakenings and they have seen some really horrible things in their altered vision. So yeah, I think when you are moving through this process, it's trying to remain in the present so that you're not, your brain's not trying to alter your vision too much because sometimes what you can see isn't um, a nice thing. And I, I know some people, I personally, who've been through this and they've they've said that their visions that they've had have been very, very traumatic, but then it's not actually what's re- really happening. So that is something to just be aware of, really just breathe breathe for a bit at one point I had this really deep fear of people taking advantage of me so I was being very very picky about who I was kind of sharing too much information with and I felt like I could really see when people were were taking advantage of me and where I was allowing it to happen and that was really uncomfortable because at this point I felt like most of the women in my life and these weren't women that I knew from like way back when you know people from my hometown these were like this was this was like Glastonbury stuff I just felt like I was being taken advantage of and used and I became very arm's length because I thought I just don't know who I can trust I didn't know who was there for me and who was truly being true and I feel like this is another level of altered vision as well because I had this deep fear of not being able to trust the people in my life even though I had people showing up for me in a great way and everyone was being really lovely I just wasn't sure if people were fucking with me or not and I think it just illuminated a lot of the stuff that was inside of me that I needed to work on just really made it as if it was happening so that I had to like face it face on and so I had to like work through that so that was really difficult 
my body, ever since this Kundalini awakening has happened, my body twitches so much. It still twitches to this day. So it's one thing my partner, I feel really bad actually about this because bless him, he already struggles to sleep. But when I'm trying to sleep or I'm like falling off to sleep, I twitch like crazy. I, tw I twitch when I'm sleeping and I twitch before I'm about to sleep. Sometimes it's a big massive twitch that wakes me up when it's right before I am about to drop off to sleep and I always feel really bad because if we're like both about to fall asleep and then I do this big twitch I wake him up and then I'm awake and I'm like oh shit sorry but that never used to happen I never ever remember twitching at this level but my body just fucking loves to twitch now and it's really actually annoying but it's just one of those things that I just can't seem to shake but it's just obviously the energy trying to like move through me and sometimes I get this feeling where I'm laying still for a certain period of time that my body just wants to be like just do this big twitch and I don't understand why it just this energy just needs to move through me do you know what I'm saying so yeah um I feel like I've kind of made it through all the points oh okay no so there's there's one last point that I want to say and then I'm going to talk about change of diet and change of routine that happened after the awakening um but the last thing and one of the really really big realizations I had and I was like oh my god this is actually crazy was that I I remember I was laying in bed one night and I was like having these moments of realizations and these flashes of images of things to heal and why I've been doing this and a way to heal it. And I just had this deep fucking realization that I was like, a lot of the people in the spiritual community specifically, and I'm not just talking like spiritual new age, I'm talking about like people that are, you know, in church communities as well. We tend to place our trust in something outside of ourselves. I hear it so much and I've heard it come out of my mouth so many fucking times that I'd be rich if I'd give myself a pound every time I said it. But it's like when we're moving through a process and we want to lean into trust, because leaning into trust and surrendering to the process is very, very important to life. But this was when I realized that I was always saying like, I trust my spirits and I trust my guides and I trust the universe to guide me. And then you've got people that will say, I trust in God. I trust in a higher energy or a higher spirit. But what about trusting you? What about trusting you in the process? I just remember laying there and thinking, all this time I have been saying, I trust in spirit and I trust in my guides and I trust in my ancestors and I trust in the universe. I've never sat there and said, I trust myself. It's actually really simple, you know? We, and this is a realization, this is a, a, a true realization I had in this moment that we literally are walking this planet in this body with this soul inside of this body and yet we are placing our trust in something outside of ourselves. I get that. Yeah, no, they, they're supporting us. They're definitely guiding us. They're definitely helping guide the way, light the path. But you are physically taking yourself on that path. So when you start trusting in yourself, oh, wow, you have so much more confidence in the process. And this was the realization I had. And I just thought, oh, my goodness me, this whole time I've been like, I trust in spirit, I trust in God. And I haven't even said I trust me. I trust myself. I trust myself to get me to where I need to be. I trust myself to do the things that I want to do. I trust myself to be the person, the best version of myself that I can be. I trust myself to heal. I trust myself to grow. And I've just, ne I'd never said that. And I just thought, oh my God, I need to trust myself. Like I need to trust myself. So the realization of trusting myself really helped me connect with myself even deeper. And then I wanted to talk about my practice, my change in routine. And I've talked about, you know, routines and stuff in one of my previous episodes. But during this time, I used to do a lot of yoga, meditation. It was the same practice that I was doing for a really long time, like yoga, meditation. I wasn't being fully consistent, but I was doing it enough for it to be part of my routine. And all of it stopped. Everything, everything stopped. I was like, I'm going to bring more new things into my life that are different out of practice. And my practice, my spiritual practice became presence. Now, I found this lady online on YouTube. I think her name's Maddie Shika. I will link her down below. And she basically, if, if you are going for a Kundalini awakening, watch her videos because her videos have been amazing. She always teaches the same thing, which is coming back to presence, coming back to 
your soul and letting your soul guide you, letting your soul lead the way and letting your soul that resides within this body guide this physical vessel that we are here living in, right? So I won't talk too much about the whole practice because I talk about it in a previous episode. So go and check that out if you are interested or just go and check out Malishika because she'll talk about it. Um, But a lot of her stuff and her work is based around Kundalini and people going to her and saying, this is all happening to me because of my Kundalini awakening. What do I do? How do I fix this? And she always comes back to presence. Now, I haven't been great with the practice of leaning in and bowing to my soul every day. My beautiful soul that's guided me all this way. But it's something that the practice of presence, that bliss state is just as powerful. So that basically, I'm digressing, but the practice of presence became my routine. It became my spiritual practice. Any single time that I felt like my anxiety was starting to kick off or I started feeling stressed about something or I was worried about something or I was overthinking something, I just stopped for a moment and I just leaned in and I just bowed to my soul And I imagined my soul in my heart space and I was just like, I trust you to guide me. I trust you to guide me because my soul is within me. It's me. It's my higher self. So I was always leaning into that to be like, I trust you to guide me. I trust you to guide me. That really helped me. And I remember when I actually, I don't even think I've actually even spoke about this yet. But when I was first speaking to my partner, the first talking process, I feel like if you have been in relationships before and those sorts of things can make you anxious at the beginning this can really help this practice can really help of like leaning in allowing your trust to just really really anchor you into this earth and also just side noting that the practice of presence and the realization that my previous few years I had been so up in the clouds I'd been so out of this kind of world in a sense of like wanting to be abducted by aliens <laughs> wanting to be taken off this earth and just taken to another uh, another world and I just realized that we're here for a reason we're here on this planet for a reason and we need to connect to the earth more we need to connect to nature and then the thought of being present was just so much more like I feel so much more grounded I was so up here and I was so up in my head and so up in these realms that I wasn't anchored into the earth I wasn't present with with this reality I was so much more like again seeking things outside of myself trusting in the things outside of myself and trying to find guidance and spiritual connection from something outside of myself when really it's all within me it's all within me hence the reason of align within you know because it's all within us we have all the answers inside of ourselves for our life and our life going forward I don't get me wrong I'm not saying that i don't ask people questions and I don't like to have some sort of guidance from others and other wiser wiser beings but it's like when you go and get a reading done right say if you go get a reading done even if it's just like an astrological reading or it's um, a medium reading or any type of reading they're just telling you who you are and then you just go yeah that's me yeah I resonate with that so you already fucking know do you know what I'm saying so but sometimes we just need that extra bit of like uh, um is it riff riff we need to be it needs to be affirmed reaffirmed reaffirmed by others so I've digressed I realized I've dig- I digressed a little bit there but so the change in routine became more so free flow fr- just pure free flow I was just like letting me choose what I wanted to do that day I wasn't being too structured at all I was very much living in my feminine energy at that time the process of that then led to my change of diet so I don't know if anybody's followed me on here for like a really long time. You may or may not know that I used to be vegan and I was vegan for five years. And when this happened, I don't know what it was, but like my need and my craving for new food changed. I started craving meat. I was like completely like vegan. I was a non-meat eater for six years, vegan for five years. And... I just, I started craving chicken really, really bad. I don't know what it was. I I even had dreams about eating chicken. It took me a while though to eventually eat meat after that. But initially, when I say about it altered my whole being, I think that the change in diet was a big part of it. And I'm not really, I still don't really understand it to be honest, but it wasn't like I was, I can't explain it. It's really hard to explain. 
and I don't know whether other people might I don't know whether other people can explain it why you go from vegan to meat eater I do feel like initially it was the spiritual change that happened within me which then led to me needing to give my body the right things for it to thrive in the way that suited me best and so it took me a while and I didn't eat meat until I was back in my hometown rather than in Glastonbury but I did start eating eggs I started eating dairy again um, when I was in Glastonbury and then I started eating meat mid-year like summertime in 2023 so and I just can't imagine going vegan again it's really weird some people have change in diet when they have a Kundalini awakening but some people tend to go from like meat eater to vegan where it's been the opposite for me because I was vegan for like five years so it felt like a huge detox and then my body was like crying for certain things that it needed it all came from after this that is my story and my journey of my awakening story with kundalini it's something that i found for myself it when it first initially happened the months after that it kept happening again but then it kind of slowly stopped and i actually remember one of my friends saying to me it will probably stop those big activations will probably stop over time and they definitely did and a lot of people when they go through their kundalini awakening they tend to say that like a lot of changes happen in your life after that that you just cannot fathom and it's just something that you just have to move through even how you look like my body just i don't know what happened but i just shed so much weight not that i was ever big but like compared to what i was like when i first moved there like i just shed loads of weight really really easily and although I wasn't really working out at all, and I was walking a lot, but it was as if energetic shit that I was holding on to had just dissolved and my body would, could just come back to the, how it's meant to look. Hence, going back to like the confidence, like I feel very confident in myself. I feel very happy with how I look. I feel good in my body. My bit of advice that I wanna give to you at the end of this is go easy on yourself when this happens to you because I know it can feel very isolating, it did for me. Even though I had people that I could talk to about it, it did still feel quite isolating. So just go easy on yourself and just be mindful about who you're sharing your story with. And I know that sometimes can be quite hard, but for me, I just think some people don't understand it. Some people get it and some people don't. And that's completely up to them. That's completely their journey, their story, their whatever. But for me, I just think that you just need to be um, conscious about who you're sharing it with and find community, find people around you, find people online that you can talk to about it that you might resonate with. I'm like over a year into this now. So it happened in 2023 and I'm now obviously 2024. It will be May when this comes out. A lot has happened since then. I actually have wrote so many notes in my diary here about of what happened a year later and I will like to talk about this in another episode but I just felt to start this off to just share my journey my story what happened after that now I don't feel misunderstood I did for a period of time and I don't feel disconnected from my friends because I think when it first happened I was like oh my god my friends I'm not going to be able to like what what's going to happen are we going to be able to resonate with things and the shifts that have happened since then are just so crazy to me the level of healing and the the fastness of it i will realize something and i'll move through it and even though at the time it feels like it drags out for a couple of weeks or it drags out for a long time it really actually shifts very quickly up and out of my body and like quicker than it used to um and yeah it's just a really interesting journey so i've got ideas for some other episodes are based on kundalini which i definitely want to bring into this space to have specific episodes dedicated for certain things that are related to my story and my journey and what happened and the dark side of it and the light side of it and how it affected my sensitivity and the side effects specifically yeah just the process of what happened a year after and i know for a fact looking back on this in like five years time I'm going to be looking at it from another lens because so many other things would have happened after that and so many changes would have been made after that and I like to look at people's videos myself of like 
five years after Kundalini Awakening and them talking about their experiences with that. So I really want to make this something that is accessible for people. And um, I really hope that if you are moving through this, that you are supported by at least someone and you support yourself and just really, really lean into the practice of um, surrendering and trusting yourself and practice presence as much as you can. Go gentle on yourself. Do things that are creative for you. Live in the flow of your present moment and really try and live in alignment to the things that you love to do. Just try and be the best version of you. I really hope that this episode has served purpose and i really hope that this episode has helped anybody that is moving through this right now please leave any comments down in the comment section below if you have been moving through this and what your most intense experience has been after your kundalini awakening and what you have learned from it the most up until now i would say the most i learned from my kundalini so far is presence is really important being here in the now is really important and although I'm not perfect and I fall off track all the time, it is one of the things that has been the best thing for me and has served me in ways when I have needed it to, like when I'm feeling really stressed or if I'm feeling like overwhelmed or anxious about something, that leaning in to yourself and trusting yourself and just knowing that like whatever you're moving through, even if it's hard and heavy, it is what you're meant to move through because it's only going to up level you and shift you into a higher version of yourself i'll leave it there i hope you enjoyed my journey and my story and i cannot wait to see you in the next episode i hope you all have a beautiful day i hope that you all are taking care of yourself be kind to yourself be kind to others and have a beautiful day much love guys Bye.